Namo Shakyamuni Buddha. Namo Shakyamuni Buddha. Namo Shakyamuni Buddha. Alright, Melinda, I also will emphasize what we talk about in the um, Venerable Wu Qing so that you hopefully didn't, didn't miss out too much. Um, so for our main event in Sunday, we start with Buddha stories, chapter four in a way. I put it in chapter. Enlightenment, Buddha's enlightenment. So previously we talked about uh, how Buddha has attained um, an awareness of life is not going to be as good like this always. It's not pessimistic, it's just how it is, impermanence. And when he was young, at the age of 19, he quit his um, lavished, well-taken-care life, you know, careless life, lavish life. Everything he wanted, the king will always make sure he get the best. However, he let it go because he's aware the realities are always there. You always will go through the aging, death, illness. Right, Lao Bing Si. So he went to see this four scenery, and the last scenery, the fourth one, touched him. He saw an ascetic peacefully sitting by, meditating, at serene posture and facial complexion, very serene and peaced. He was inspired. How can he be so at peace when he has nothing? When he does not seem to have the wealth, you know, the power. The respect, the reverence, maybe people will have respect for monk, um, the, the, the sort of authority. He doesn't have anything, but he's peaceful, serene. I need to know this might be a path out of it, out of this condition. So he went processing this. You know, even he married to uh, Yosodha, um, the, um, the wife of the Buddha, before he's a Buddha, wife of the prince. Shyamuni. Uh, and then he he went out from his uh, palace at the age of 19, went to the riverside, you know, start to his journey of seeking the truth. And it took 12, 12 years before he reached the point of enlightenment. So by then he's probably 30, 31. So we put it in 30 years old. Um, so in these 12 years, uh, last week we talked about how he met few teachers that teach him the enlightenment, uh, levels of enlightenment. And the Buddhist cosmology has, um, I think it's better since I have technology at my hand, might as well. Buddhist cosmology. Technology, hey, cosmology. Oh my God, this is good. Give me a sec. Please give me a second. Right, right. Let's do this, guys. Let's do this. Since I'm here, why not? Why not? Now, mind you, you can treat... I'm talking to everyone, right? Everyone. I don't know if this is live or not, but I'm just going to say it. This might be you know, otherworldly for us. You know, it might be like, wow, this is very, you know, sci-fi and all that. But you have to think about, you know, our state of mind, in the very least, our state of mind has so many forms, so many thoughts, so many standards. Some people, we might scold them, you're an animal. And uh, not in the fun way, but in the angry way, because they behave unwholesomely. They are no restraint. They do things without um, caring about others. They you know, they have no shame. Most common thing is, you're a child, because you have no shame. That's something we think about, you know. And so this is the same, you know, this is the same. Um, the higher it gets, the peaceful, the purer it gets, the, the state of mind. All this came out from state of mind. It's not like some special person constructing it. It's just how our kaleidoscope, remember guys, kaleidoscope? These are one small portion of kaleidoscope. They are a lot more beyond this. Um, but for our interest, because we understand Buddha's story, Buddha's teaching, and his context is in you know, the Indian cosmology. And this is what he observed in that few 
first decade, give it that way. I mean, first few years learning under different teachers, good teachers, really good teachers. They have deep meditation that can reach all the way to the top. All right, here. Spirit for nothingness. So a lot of, two of his teachers, I think, achieved this. Akinchanayatana. So this is a Pali, I think. Um, sphere of nothingness. So where we are here is human. Human. Hey, human. We are human. Hi, how are you? We made it. Well, yeah, I did a lot of mistakes right now. I might fall in here, but just be careful, guys. Point is, this is a human realm, right? Mix of pleasure and pain. I love the way they say it. Yep, this is how we experience it. All right. So this is something we're very familiar with. This is also quite familiar. Hells, you know, hell on earth. You know, look at Hiroshima being bombed. That moment is just terrible and makes you vomit and cry. Hell on earth. I'm not. So those are a state of mind. And here we start to see things get more and more, you know, like a time dilation to get better and better. 500 years equals to 9 million human years. So their lifespan is 500 years. But they have to convert time currency into our currency. One day in there is our 50 human years. So that's the lowest level of heaven. And they have 9 million human years lifespan. Something like that. So those are all cosmology Tianwen Suzi in Chinese word. They are, how to say, it, numbers that is cosmological, right? Millions is a basic currency. So the one that we always hear Buddha, we always mention a lot is this one. Tao Li Tian, Chinese. I think it's quite famous. Tava Tim Sa. San Si San Shen, the Divang, 33 gods. So over here, they live for 36 human years, 36 million human years. And their currencies get more and more valuable. It's like going to Europe instead of going to somewhere cheaper. So it's like more expensive. So here, a lot of them are devotees of Buddhas, a lot. Or oh, one of them, Saka, Di Si Tian, right? And why am I saying that? Because remember this word, because we will be mentioning a little bit of his, this one, when Buddha again, like to learn where he gives the talk. The first sutra, right? Yama, Yama in this case. So I'm not going too much. So Tusida is where the um, laughing Buddha, you know, the the, the 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 Buddha with a bag and then the big tummy. His real form is, you know, Maitreya Buddha. He's Maitreya Bodhisattva Maitreya. Technically, he was the next Buddha after this cycle has ended. This Dharma cycle has ended. Um, he's currently living there. Well, a form of him is there, right? Giving the talks of Dhamma. You know, exactly what we learned right now. He gives Dhamma talk. Insight. Um, insight the inner courtyard. There's an external courtyard, inner courtyard. Those things are so detailed, you can't just imagine it. It's not like writing script. It's literally describing like earth. Like, you know, this is very familiar, right? You have five continents, you have a soil, you have grass. He's describing like that. So this is an experience. It's like you observe microscope in a, in a amoeba or something. You observe the structures. So this is the same, same thing. It's not wishy-washy. A person who is wishy-washy do not have that caliber. Right? Someone like Bodhisattva, Buddha, who is Sakya Muni, who is a prince, who is a king, he do not do wishy-washy stuff, right? person like him of his caliber, right, will not wishy-washy things out of nothing, right? He give up all that luxury, not because he's trying to make a novel, a best-selling New York novel or something. It's because he really cares about getting out of six realms. And these are the pathways there are quite common logics back in the Indian, um, the, the ancient Indian time. And they, he just happened to confirm what they see, right? It's, he didn't create this out of the blue. Those are cited by many highly meditative teachers, legit ones, right? Whether they are, you know, in accordance to Buddha path or not, that's later. But this is, this is 
a common sense in a way. It's like us talking about five continents. Right? If you use that five continents mindset, uh, maybe talking to a caveman 500 million years ago, they would be like, what are you talking about? All I know about is that plane out there. They're not stupid. It's just their circumstance is that much. If you tell them there is moon, you can go to moon. Just talk to medieval people. They will, they will laugh at you. They will be like, what are you talking about? So I hope you, we, we all get the gist of it, right? Just because we can't reach that level of understanding does not mean it's not there, right? Don't use... It's like the caveman only knows stone, spring stone. You teach them all that high-level technology of putting silicones into a small piece of uh, instrument, right? They will be like, this is magic, or this is what? Some smarter one would be like, how do you do this? But most people will be like, what? Same. All right? Just leave a space for this. There is always a space for this. I do not support teaching Buddhism without acknowledging this cosmology, without acknowledging karma. That's my bottom line, past, present, future. It's okay if we can not take that part out. But when I say it, I will always involve this one. This is core, integral. I have to emphasize. Um, and then these are the realm, desire realms, right? Desire realms means right now we have that concept of male, female, lust, sexual, um, the copulation, stuff like that, to produce a human being, produce a, a next uh, species. However, the higher it gets, the purer it gets, right? Up to, up to here, right? They still have male and female. And up to here, the highest, they only need to look at each other in order to make a baby. They don't even need to do anything. All right, the higher it gets, the lesser act they need to do. The touch hands they already have. There. Or they look at each other, or they hug each other, and then they get lesser and lesser interaction. That means it gets purer. What I'm trying to get at is it's purer as you get higher. It's dirtier as you get lower. Muddier. It's like a... When you look at the glass of water with sands, it's sedimented at the bottom, all the muddy stuff, right? The humans mix. It's always like that. Meat. It's always like that. Look at us. We have meat, physical stuff, but we also have mental stuff, intangible stuff. Tangible, intangible. Always in that form. They don't have it. Anything above human realm, they don't have the meat stuff. I don't know how to describe this. Flesh. Yes. So beyond this, there is no male and female concept. Right? All this argument about this gender, that gender, is pointless here. Because there's there's only existence. You exist. That's it. It's very easy, very pure. None of that. And here, people need to seal fan hen. That means in Chinese, fan hen, Brahma, the path of Brahma. Path of Brahma is defined by purity. Right? That's why Buddha always emphasized, start with you know, letting go of your ego and letting go of your craving desires. Those purity is a foundation of Buddhism, as much as foundations of every single school in India. Even in other religion, it's also important. They need to purify their heart before they can accept the grace of God or you know, the, the recantation, the, ch the, the chantings, the prayers, the solat, you know, the all this needs to have pure heart. And 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 this one is devoid of um, lust, desires. Those are most definite features. So all here is pure and clean and they're all enjoying a different level of their um, meditative tranquility, deep meditative tranquility. First level is the roughest and then it gets more fine and fine. It was defined by elements, you know, elements of fire, elements of Water? No, maybe not. Sorry. It says that the elements that destruct the world will reach whichever level of heaven. Uh, and when, because when there is becoming, there is unbecoming. When there is form, there is mm, extinction. Uh, yeah. When there is life, there is death. Same goes for here. Destruction will only reach to the third level of heaven. Anything above that is safe. And here is where Arhat the people who go into the other hut will say, will stay. So these are exclusive. Not exclusive because people make it so, it's because they are deep, meditative tranquility. 
although their kung fu is the level same kung think of black belt right but this is like black black belt but they are people with the right direction with a direction who get out because buddha guided them this is how you really get out of six dreams we talk about six dreams it's not small guys it's a lot and we're not finished yet we have even like 10 dharma realms those are just to give us that flesh um, image the really really like how to say concrete image this is our this is our real existence right so here is very fine that's still material right there is still like material but they are very fine material like atomic level uh, maybe fine atomic level um, there's a saying just to entertain this because it's very fun to talk about this is arhat arahant or arhat depending on what language pali or sanskrit arohan all right um, they can see very fine atomic they can see the material in the atomic level without help of devices right? we can't right we need telescopes so it, it pretty much speaks about our level of technology you know we can reach it with technology however he can use it he can go between materials atomic gap we only can see it and then we need to think about a bunch of stuff he's very deep magic meditative tranquility and able to go through the gap that's how you can see people some people can you know our heart will show them as cross the wall and stuff but i'm not going to entertain too much on that part so the point here is there's still material there's still form right there's still shape here they have desires and all that so the rough rougher shape lower it gets the shape gets uglier and gets more um, rougher your chu tao so here there's no form this is a pure mental concept like pure uh, conceptual kind of world it's achieved by deep meditation really deep so buddha in few years two three years he learned up to here we can't even reach here these are the common heaven that people go who do good deeds be fitted to their parents to you know treat their people right and there's a lot of good stuff there you know they do you know it's not eaten. don't look down and scoff at it this is a really good everyone is worthy of respect we respect like good people here right we respect these people as well they are worthy of respect but what i'm saying is the level of meditation he can achieve that within two days god so i was surprised when venerable chung to say someone who can name for right chan amito for they're able to achieve you know the Yixing Buluan, you know the the one-mindedness, or uh, Li Yixing Buluan, Si Yixing Buluan, all these technical terms, you know, where these are that one is like way above, way beyond. What I'm trying to say is this is amazing, right? He's amazing, and and his teacher is not to be scoffed at. Really good teachers, right? If I remember the name, to give it weight, significant. Um, Vesali, right? First teacher he has met since he became a monk before his Buddhist Buddhahood. Very well known for meditation of sphere of nothingness. Akim Chanya Ayatana. Alright? He able to achieve that. This one, the highest one is Fei Xiang, Fei Fei Xiang, Chu Tian. The Chinese make it very straightforward. Not thinking, not not thinking. Literally the one means not thinking, not not thinking heaven. Alright? The sphere of neither perception nor non-perception. So when we say Kong, oh, this is the level. There's still space concept, there's still conscious concept, like me and you and that, but this is nothingness. And then the highest one is Fei Xiang, Fei Xiang, Shu Tian. However, Buddha do not encourage us to go into these three, four realms, right? These four realms is, how to say, it's like you're getting stuck in that corner. It, it diverted. This one, at least they still form, there's still some sort of society. You know, you still have to, I don't know, I, I, I'm not there, because so I can't tell you. But what, what, what I can understand is Buddha do not encourage us to go here. That's why you can see all the, you know, sage to be, you know, sage in Buddhist standard. Arahants, this is the highest. The first four, the original Buddhism, the, the early Buddhism, they have four, right? 
说的潘啊，许多欢，许多欢，阿拉罕，阿罗汉，呃，阿拉汉 is the highest， which is the first bachelor degree in Buddhism， right？ And they only stay in form realm. They can have the ability to get there, but it's pointless. It does not serve the enlightenment. Because what they have is they still have some sort of attachment in a, in a way. I, I don't know how to describe it. They need to have this. Uh, I will find a better explanation next time. Uh, because they, Buddha already mentioned it, I think, remember. So the point is this level is very high and Buddha has achieved it within a few days, few years. And he said there's nothing else for me to learn. And the teacher's like offering half of it. His place to you, all right. Mind you, when Buddha sees something like that, it's not because he's arrogant. It's because he literally have nothing else to learn. He need to find a solution. He's not saying that I'm good. No, he don't do that. He is good, and he does not need to do that, right? He's just saying that oh, um, there's nothing else for me to learn. Um, I I need to find a way to get out of six dreams because when he's in deep meditation at this stage, he can observe people. Falling back, not here, not here. When you spend all your money, like say ten million dollars in one go, you're negative. You might be in debt. So what happened is it's for all the way to here because of their past life. So it's fallable. That's what I'm trying to say. It's fallable. You know, the ladder you climb here is not safe unless you reach this place. All right? There is a little bit of a special check, uh, check uh, stop. You reach this place, you find you a okay, all right. You reach Soda Pana, which is the first first Xiao Xiao Sheng. It's like the, the 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 very baby first step in Buddhism context. You will guarantee no lower than human realm. That means your state of mind do not give rise to greed, hatred, ignorance easily. You might have that. You have less less than that, but you get purer as you go. You need to go here, here, here. Here seven times, qi zi wang fan, right? So those are all in sutra.、Right? You can ask all the traditions. They all we all commonly understand this. So up down up down up down heaven human heaven human seven times. That's why we need to go to pure land. It's, it's very quick, right? This one is like, think of it like a bamboo stick, right? A bamboo stick. If you want to go up, the normal way you need to climb. The, the walls bite through one le- level and then bite through another level, slowly climb your way all the way up there. For、uh, pure land, we just bite the the the, the over here. You just poop go straight to pure land. So another good stuff about pure land is it's really convenient. Right back to my point. So the Buddha has learned all he has to learn from two teachers, and that took him about six five to six years. So what he did, he start to do extreme ascetism. So he start to say, okay, meditation does not bring me anywhere. I can't achieve that using what has been learned before me. Those are already archived by people, right?、Um, While、well, I'm still at the topic of the arupa loka formless realm, so desire form and formless, I'm just going to explain why these people with such great merits will fall back. Because when they reach to this stage, I just remember, by the way, that's how my memory works. Sorry, guys.、Um, this um, 飞翔飞飞翔出天 this highest level. When they reach there, they thought the Buddha told me about enlightenment. Talk about the nothingness. So this must be it. But why isn't there anyone? Or he feel like it's very dry or something. I don't know. He feel very. He's not there. He thought he's there, and he's starting to. Defame Buddha. He's like, oh, he's lying, man. This man is lying. It's nothing like what the Buddha have said. So that one fine thought caused him to boop all the way down there, because he's not, you know, he he went to the off path. So that's very unfortunate. That's why it's not that easy. Liu Dao Lun Hui is a very dangerous place. Six Realm is not a very easy path to tread out because there's always a Gatekeeper as well. It's like I'm talking about like it's like I'm talking about games, but it's, it, it, it is happening. People will gatekeep here, every single form, right? The, the the roof of the heaven, they will have someone to do that. You know where Mara is, which is basically demon in a way, but not really. He's he's a, he's a heavenly being, all right. Here, he's here. Di Lu Tian, 
Right? These people are really like, they have virtues and all that, but they have attachment, desires. So they don't want you to get out of their six rooms. So they, they want you to stay here. They're happy for you to do all the good stuff, but they don't want you to attain enlightenment because they have attachment to the people. Like if my people keep becoming Buddha, like the kind of mindset, if everyone become a monk, there's no human anymore. There's no, because there's no one to procreate. But the problem right now is the first thing that you need to procreate to exist is already a problem. Now that's very counterintuitive. What? Right? Isn't that normal to have a mom and a dad to the children? It is common sense for us. But if you jump out of that roof, what about uh, Pure Land? How do they happen to be? Do they need a mom and dad? No. Everyone just appear in there because they have the same vow. If everyone becomes monk and actually practice in human world, human world becomes pure land. Because everyone practice pure deeds. They don't commit any sort of a, a sexual conduct. right? They re restrain themselves. So they might convert the whole life, the whole realm, human realm, it's not just earth, guys, into pure land. So, that's, that's something I just found recently from Master Chingo or someone else. I think it's very good. Um, yeah, that's very intuitive. Oh, shit. Now that I think of it. Okay, so he look, work hard, right? Find a way. Now he stuff himself. What if I stuff myself? You know, people keep saying that you stuff yourself. Some people like meditate on becoming a cow because cow looks very serene when they eat the grass. See, it gets to that. You know, experimental stage. So he tried all, he tried as much as anyone could imagine. He tried to starve himself, sit under the tree, very, very um, cutting down the food intakes from uh, three bowls of rice to two bowls to one bowl to half bowl and then to one grain per day to half a grain per day to the skin of the grains. So it get really extreme. And he did that for months, I think. I think months. What happened is, it's not the way. He fell down one day, he's too hungry and fell down. He's like, all I have learned from this extreme ascetism is extreme fasting is my body. I keep always thinking about my body is hurting. My The only pain, the only thing I have is just pain with my body. That's it. It does not, it has nothing to do with enlightenment. Self-torture, it has nothing to do with enlightenment. All this appearance of, it's pointless. So he's like, I'm not going to do this anymore. It's not achieving anything. So he stand up and start to intake the food. And then one day there's a, I think famous, there's a lady who carry the milk, you know, uh, larded milk across the river and watch a very serene figure, Buddha, who was recovering, still recovering from his um, uh, lack of food intakes. You can't just suddenly eat a lot of food. You need to slowly take it in. So he sat there and meditate. And then this lady just came out. When he came out, the village she came from is like, there's a common, you know, understanding. Like, if you met a tree god and you offer a tree god milk, you will get a lot of merits. Just at the right time, Buddha was sitting there, looking very dignified and serene. He's like, oh yeah, that must be a tree god They're offering to you. I, I don't know how it happens, but Buddha was very uh, accepting the milk and he just said thank you and then he said, Something like, when I gain enlightenment, I will, you know, help you. Something like that. Um, apparently, he might be the first lay Buddhist before he started the Sangha. They already have a lay Buddhist who's spearheaded as one of his disciples. The point is, that's it. He finished. And he recovered. When he recovered, he went to a body tree, which is now Bovkaya. Sitting now, say, I am not going to leave this seat until I achieve enlightenment, which means until I understand what's going on, until I actually understand how do I get out of six realms. Um, so he did. One day he woke up from his meditation or maybe just opened his eye. He never slept. He just opened his eye. He looked at the sky, you know, starry sky, and he saw uh, the sky was, you know, starry. I don't know. It's Zen. It's very Zen. I, I'm not. I can't. I, I haven't seen what he sees, but it's kind of like enlightenment. You know, he's just like, yeah, you got it. And there's a lot in there. 
You know, it's not just a person sitting on a tree, not moving, open eyes, look at the sky. Those are form, appearance. But what's inside is deep. So what he say is, 七在七在,一切众生皆有如来智慧得想,但以万想分别而不能争得. Oh, wondrous, wondrous. Such wondrous thing is that all beings have already owned, have is the owner and are the Buddha. Right? They all have Buddha's you know the value, the virtues, the merits, the um, talents, the ability of a Buddha. However, because of their wandering thoughts, because of their mind not you know settled, they always jump from one effort to another, craving this and that. All these wandering thoughts, summarizing two words, wandering thoughts. Uh, because of this wandering thoughts, they lost sight of it. They didn't lose it, they lost sight of it. They just don't know it's there. It's like you already have five million dollars worth of gold under your house. You just not bother looking at it. You just keep looking outside, work nine to five so hard and then trying to deal with the dramas and causing more troubles, not knowing you already have the wealth inside. So that's his first word. And that first 37 days of his enlightenment at the age of 30, he stayed in the heaven. He didn't go straight to human. He's like, how do I talk to human? What he found, he, the first 37 days, he actually talked about what he is, where he is. So he did not, in a sense, water down not watered down. He did not simplify it. So his full experience as a Buddha, put it in words. However, remember, Buddhist, Buddhism has a very good phrase, 不可思议, unfathomable, un, unthinkable and un, un, untalkable. Not because they don't allow you to talk, because if you're there, you literally cannot use the word. Word fails, because word came out from division. You, me, you know, I talk to you, you talk to me, you, there's always yin yang, right? There's always this and that. So you, literally logical failure. You can't use words to describe it because that is beyond division. However, he, he still used words because he's wise. So what he did is he talked about what later becomes or titled as Hua Jing, the Flower Adornment Sutra. One of the best work, best um, sutra ever, commonly recognized by Mahayana Buddhists, uh, Chinese Mahayana Buddhists. Everyone who learn Buddhism always aspire to master the, the flower adornment sutra. It's the king of sutra. It was titled, dubbed as the king of sutra because it's. I'm not there. I haven't read too much, but I can see that they already have such a deep. You know, all this like cosmology, all these concepts and stuff, it all came from there. You know, the layers, the multi, like like what we have, quite famous now, the you know, many 11 planes of existence and multi-universe and stuff. Everyone is Buddha. That That is the concept championed by this because this is not a thought. This is not a thesis. This is his report. Reporting to people who can understand it, which is not in human realm. He went, he has to go up here. Where, where is he? Dao Li Tian ma? Oh, this is Dao Li Tian. I think he went here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a very common place. A lot of, a lot of time he always went up here because his Dharma condition is quite good there. Sometimes he may go a little bit higher there, but most of the time he's there. You know, his mother passed away. The birth mother came to here immediately. Of course, the virtue of being a the mother of Buddha. And just a side interesting note, because we talk about past life, future life, that mother of Buddha is also Bodhisattva, obviously. And um, he, they have a vow to be the mother of Buddha when they trying to perform in front of human. Right? They will become mother of Buddha. And that one has been mother of Buddha for seven times or something. So anyway, the point here is he went up here and gave talk to his um, Dhamma to his mother. And when he enlightened, he immediately go up there and talk to them. 
he just appeared. It's like holographic. It just appeared. So he appeared and, and gave a talk of the Flower Dormant Sutra. And the Flower Dormant Sutra, how big is the Sutra? Why is it happening only in heaven, life? Why is it not in human realm? Because the world will be over many times before he finished in our human sense. Because it took them, seven, 37 days is compressed because time is time is relative, right? I really like this era because right now I can use Einstein. Thank you, Einstein. I can use his word easily because we talk about time dilation. You know, time is not always absolute. You're always in reference to another person, right? You're one second in reference to what? One second from what? Three seconds from what, right? So, so, um, same goes for this, 37 days in relation to that. You can compress the time as much as you can stretch the time. So time is like sponge. Basically compress in 37 days, but up there might be a long afternoon or something. Uh, people, you know, different sense of time. So he go up there. Sorry, I didn't do my full research yet, but um, he did give a talk in the heavenly realm, which I believe to be Tava Timsa, which is the common place he gave talks. And he gave a talk about how he has, what he has found, what is a state of a Buddha. That's where all the concept of, um, you know, oh, how do we, that is like the whole work. Uh, you know, the uh, sorry, there are 10 by 10 by 10 by 10 layers. Uh, those things are the works of the latest. Basically, there are many layers to be Buddha. All right, beyond this, this is just rudimentary in comparison. So he already have all this advanced, amazing stuff, all right, that he has discovered, but he couldn't put it in words, all right? He couldn't just go in front of human and tell you, hey man, this is what it is. It's it's not that he couldn't, it's just needs to have context, right? Everything needs to have a pretext, prologue, you know, that's how a good story begins. He, he needs to have a good story. Obviously, at the time of his enlightenment, other than humans who cannot see through the material realm, everyone else can see because it's very obvious. It's shining and all that. Everyone see that, oh, there's a Buddha in this world. So everyone come down and pay respects and stuff. So they're already ready. They already know Buddha will give talk. They are ready. They go up there and just talk, listen to him, talk about Hua Yan Jing. And this sutra uh, is for the level of his immediate students, like Guan Yin, like the, the appearance of Guan Yin, Manjushri, Di Zhang, those big bodhisattvas. And obviously there are many smaller bodhisattvas. Um, they are all able to receive it. So these are meant for them. However, because uh, five, six hundred years after Buddha has passed, there is a Nagarjuna or something, Long Subhusava. Ta He went in meditation and then there's another story which I will not indulge too much and he went up there in the because after the buddha has give the talk someone recorded there's a scribe in heaven and they keep it in the some method they keep it in the palace of a dragon god long gong okay uh you know it, of a dragon dragon god so in there the palace they store the sutra just like we have library he went there and he looked uh, humans not going to have lifespan. They're going to have many lifespans. They need lifespans to finish this. So what should we do? All right, let's take half of it. No, not enough. Like the volume is same size as the earth. Right. So to take a whole sutra, you need to cover the earth. You need to wrap around the earth many times. So they like, okay, I cannot make um, sushi out of the earth. You know, I cannot make a, I cannot wrap the earth like that. So let's take contact index, basically chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. So the current sutra we have, they are all index. They're talking about chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, chapter five. They're not even talking about like too much in it because there's just not enough time for us to read this. It's just telling you this is what Buddha has attained. All right, this is the depth if you try to put it in words, but it's it's just a representation of it. It's not even the actual wisdom of Buddha. It's just, it's just how it represents. When you attain, the only way is you attain it. Like Zen Buddhism, you attain it. 
All right, I'll, I'll go too much. So 37 days is the most precious, important part because it's a sprout, right? It shows what Buddha is capable of, the depth of his understanding, the width, width of his view, or well, he doesn't have a view, but the depth of his perception, horizon, you know, how deep, how far, how endless, how infinite. All right, there's a, there's a saying of um, layers upon layers, very deep, very wide, very vast. And then the world of Flower Adornment Sutra is like, um, like you know, there's no 3D concept. You know, it's beyond that. In the world view, you know, the the concept of one Buddha nature, it's from there. It's 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 there. It's Buddha nature, right? And those concept is not immediately translated in human world. He started with, what did he start? After 37 days, he came out of his meditative tranquility. He went to the forest where the original five followers that chased after him, you know, and become monk because he's inspired by his noble vow. They shunned him because he, they thought, oh, this Satya Muni is, you know, giving up his path because he started to talk to girls, drink milk, and, you know, eat something instead of going on the path of enlightenment, which they perceive as starving yourself to death. But the Buddha has understand the path of moderation, right? And moderation means, you heard a very famous analogy, one of the students of Buddha later uh, was stressed, I still cannot attain Arahant, all right? Remember, attaining Arahant back then is like getting a degree among the students of Buddha. It's, it's easy because they have the capability. They are good students. They listen. They follow the teaching of the Buddha. Jie Buddha knows a way to get to the students so that they can get enlightened. So he's very urgent. Like, ah, I can't get enlightenment. Oh my God, Buddha, I can't. And then Buddha was like, "Are you, you were a musician, right? Before you become a monk. Yes, uh, my Lord. So he talks to him. He's like, so when you tuning your... Um, you know, guitar or guitar-like instrument. What do you do, right, with the strings? Oh, I make sure these strings is just nice. So if the string is too tight, will it snap? Yes, it will, my lord. It will snap. It will lose the um, tension and hence not making sound because it snapped. Well, if you make the string too loose, you know, not tight enough, it will not play properly, isn't it? Yes, my lord, they will not come out properly, the sound. So you need to make your sound right by making your string tension just right. Yes, my lord, you have to be exact, just nice. Same goes your meditative practice. You need to have the right balance right, of hard work, of, of exerting force, and also relax and, and, and relax, you know, not too much pushing, not too much relax because it will be slacking. Not too much you know, exerting, you're overdoing it. You cannot calm down. You need to have just nice, just go on your day, continue put you in your mind on the path and you will get there. And he's under Buddha, next to Buddha. So he has all the resources he needs. So he gained enlightenment after that. So he realized that, hence he stopped doing it. So he went to the five original um, bunk was then shunning him, but he just appeared in front of their vicinity. They were like, I don't want to look at him. He betrays the path. We followed him, but he betrays the path. But when he looked at him, he's like, oh my Lord, he's like different. Like his, his radiance is different. He, he no longer, he's just different. And then they felt, you know, they have to kneel down and pay respect to this person. This is not a normal human being. They have to. So they just kneel down and pray. Like, trust, trust me, man, when you're in the presence of someone really worthy of that, you will understand that. You will know. You don't need to think. Your body will be like, yep, this is a person worthy respect. You better do it. Yes, sir. Because those are enlightened beings. They always have connections with all beings. And as long as you're able to pay real respect to it and listen and the Dharma, you'll be set. It's good. Not even, I'm not even thinking about that. I'm just like, you just need to pay respect. So, Master Ching Kong, right? Yeah. So, same, same, Master, uh, the Buddha, right? 
uh, sat down and say, let's talk about how do we get our enlightenment. First, Four Noble Truth. Four Noble Truth. Have you guys heard of Four Noble Truth? Melinda? Just so that we're not sleeping, because, yeah, totally, I would, right? Such a long session. <laughs> Just kidding. It's fine. So why, why is it? Could you tell me? This point is just knowledge check, you know, it's not like a test or something, but just good to know. Chinese. Oh, that's, be, uh, that's a bit later. The very original one. Shizhengzi. Just四个字. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, me uh, the the um the infinite no the the Amitabha Sutra mentioned uh talk talk about the title of it not the content obviously because it's a it's a it's summarizing what you can do in pure land. It's not saying the actual content. So what he say very good for noble truth started with suffering obviously because this is the thing we need to deal with. We are suffering, right? Mentally, physically, you know, existentially. <laughs> So, cool, suffering, right? Craving, desires, um, wants, not getting what you want, you know, not getting along with, uh, facing people that you don't want, uh, those are small stuff, and then you extend to having life and death and all these troubles, have COVID, illness, sickness, have everything going against what you wished. So those are sufferings. So those sufferings, Backs the question, where did it come from? So that means the second, the Four Noble Truth, second part, the accumulation of suffering, right? Ji, ku ji, right? Accumulation of suffering. How did it come to be, right? Attachments, craving, cessation. And then third one is, how do we eliminate it? How do we cease cessation of suffering? First is suffering. Second is accumulation of suffering. Third one is cessation of suffering. How do we cease the suffering? How do we stop it? All right. That means you need to practice, you know, um, like jie ding hui, which is precepts, um, meditative tranquility and wisdom. But um, I haven't dig deep into it. The last one is the path after you cease, I mean, of seizing the suffering. So how do you cease the uh, cessation of suffering? All right, and then the path to cease the suffering. So ku ji mie dao. So the last one is the path you will go on to achieve the cessation of suffering. And eventually, when you reach there, the path is called nirvana. Nirvana means you get to the other side, bi an. Nie pan ma, nie pan bi an. So I really like Chinese because they already translate all these Sanskrit words for us. Ooh inherited this 1,000 years old translation. <clears throat> so Nirvana means you get to the other side. That means you reach. You're there, man. You're there. So that's what he taught. Obviously, in one go, not everyone gets it. So this is the first Dharma will he turn, right? The first Dharma he give in human realms, right? Discounting the, the wondrous one that happens in the heaven, which is outside our ability to see. So he give that kind of talk, all right, in human realm. And everyone's like some of them attain enlightenment. One or one out of five, I think. And then the rest still need to listen again. It's like, uh could you repeat again, Venerable? So I mean um Master or, or Lord Buddha and then they repeat blah again. So you repeat second time and then few of them also gain enlightenment. So I think he has to repeat the third time or fourth, I forgot. The third time he repeat, the last few remaining also gain enlightenment. They all become Arahant. Right? This five Arahant becomes the first five Sangha, form the Sangha uh, of Buddhism. So the Buddhism is officially founded right? in that sense. You have Buddha, you have Dharma, which is the Four Noble Truth, we have Sangha. So the Buddhism officially exist in earth 
right? And Buddha means the person who has attained the enlightenment. So that's the early Buddhism. From then on, he will continue and of course we'll go in depth as we move on the goalpost of giving a talk who the 10 most wondrous student he has, you know, the 10 most talented student he has. So how the student work with their teacher or how they encounter the teacher, where where they came from, what was their background, and then uh and 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 how they you know how they encounter Buddha and how they promote help Buddha to teach their own story as well. Uh so and then he went on and began with the foundational course Arhant Nikaya or Nikaya for Southern Agama for Northern which is Northern Asia as in China, Tibet, Korea, Japan and you know maybe Northern India maybe I forgot but I know it's the East Asia area that's the Mahayana later we call it Mahayana current in the beginning we don't um, and then the bottom is um, bottom is you know, Theravada which is the Southeast Asia area. They mostly have Nikaya, Nikiya, Nikaya, Nikiya. So what it is, is just basically talking about how to be a good parents, how to be a good children, how to be a good son, this way. It's basically this way of Buddha. Talk about this. 12 years, right? 49 years of speech, 12 years he spent on this. So you can imagine why Master Jin Kong emphasized why Master Ying Guang, which Master Ching Kong follows, emphasize on, you know, foundation, like understand karma and all that, even using other sutras, uh, sutras of other traditions, Taoist traditions like Tai Shan Ka Yin which is what we're talking about just now. All right. Those are foundations. And he spent 12 years just to talk about this. And that also includes <clears throat> the Sila in Sanskrit in um, English is the precepts, it's the rules and regulations, you know. Remember, he did not conceive precepts out of nothing. His precepts is made because people don't understand um, how to behave properly. They are troublemakers. By any school, by any groups, they will always be troublemakers. Same goes for Buddha. He's not escaped from it. He's not escaped from that fate. He has to deal with troublemakers. Of course, the biggest troublemakers, which I already mentioned, is Devadatta, right? That the guy is really, really <laughs> trying to make every single thing he did, you know, personal score competition. Oh, he got 10,000 students. I got 100, I need more, stuff like that. Everything is competition for him. Um, anyway, back to the point. So he has to set up rules and regulations because someone breached the conducts of a monk. Uh, mostly people are smart, they, they know the common sense, some people just don't. Some people is very, not, not, not break it, but some I might not be clear about what to do. Okay, so Buddha eventually added more and more and more what is yes, what is no. So remember only Buddha can set the precepts. That means when he set it, the only thing we can do after is to amend it according to the circumstance. You're in China, you can't do the same clothing style like India, and you change. Now you're in US, you can't do exactly the same thing as you did when, back in China. But the spirit must always be there. Five precepts is the spirit. They never change. Spirit of the law. You know, no killing, no stealing, no sexual misconduct, uh, no, um, uh, no, 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 no lying. And the last one is to help you to prevent the first four, which is no intoxicants. Um, those are common as well in another religion. As you can see, this all came not out of nowhere. Um, 12 years, guys. Karma, talk about karma, talk about how to be a good monk. You know, monk is a honorable profession. It's a teacher, basically. They are teachers, right? Despite what we understand nowadays, they are teachers. They are not ceremony only. Back then, there's no ceremony. There's no far away. Those are the products of the, um, they are good products, they are important to help people who are too busy to have a time to set it down, to remind everyone what Buddha Dharma is. It's a function, it's a tool to propagate Dharma. However, OG 
original OG, sorry guys, the modern terms, OG Buddhism, they do not they do not have the the ceremony this and that. They don't have a lot. They just have a teacher who's teaching the path to enlightenment. They all give respect by surrounding Buddha three times, which is what we did nowadays. Right? In front of Buddha, we three times. Bow. They knew. Okay, anyway, so sorry, I was reciting the infinite life sutra. So he, three rounds. Rao for Sanza, Yu Xia, something like that. So basically, a uh, respect of that time, how you pay respect to teachers. Pretty sure it's common as well. And they, um, that's it. They just sit down and talk about Dharma. Any questions? Sit down, talk. Very relaxed. And they don't live in a house. They live in the trees. They live in a group, like an encampment. Everyone always live in the trees. And in that time, there are set rules of where you live. Some of them need to live in the graveyard next to it to remind yourself, this is where we will end up in our body. If we do not focus on attaining enlightenment, that it is. So everything is very visually engaging straightforward right like materially might not be like awesome and that's not the point right they are spiritual seekers they want to get enlightenment they want to get the truth of the matters what is the truth of the universe where do you come from where do you come from where do you go to that's the two big questions where were you before where are you after all right and and all this thing in between all these ups and downs and troubles in between those are the things that we all seek to answer, and this takes time. Buddha have to use 12 years to talk about the rules and regulations, the basic concepts of karma, and then for lay Buddhists as well. As a lay Buddhist, you have produced, you are capable of producing stuff, but you are in the engaging in producing things. So you will dedicate your money to your parents, dedicate your money to your one fourth if you invest money to your investment, property investment. You talk about that. One fourth of your property to your household needs. One fourth to uh, Buddha, to the Buddha uh, Sangha, not Buddha. Buddha don't need that. He's a ki- he's a prince, guys. He's, he he has kingdoms. He might be a Sakravati. He don't need money. That's the best part about. That's the reason why he appeared as a prince. By the way, it's, he doesn't need this, so that we can see that he's not just trying to bait for fame. He already is famous. He already is handsome, good looking. Uh, all the money, all the women, all these worldly people that yearn for, he has everything and then he let it all go. That's the best way to perform to people. And he born in the right kind of a... Well, I have to say this is amazing. They are very smart. So when I talk about it, I was like, oh my God. So, <clears> oh <throat> my Buddha. Same thing. Uh, it's just terms, right? So Buddha already mentioned don't attach the words too much. Um, as long as the point is across. So 12 years learning about how to be a good monk. 12 years learning how to be a good person. How to be a good son. How do, we, how do you do? You know, how do husband treat wife? How do wife treat husband? Respect and care. Uh, cook the food. Uh, you know, those very, very detailed stuff, guys. It's not, it's not big, nothing. He start all these day to day, you know. You know, those argue bickering couples sometimes might come to him and ask this that this that they are very interesting stuff they're very alive you know you might see a very small stuff yes that's that's everyday life of human beings it might be ancient but it's more or less our experience collective as human right so he did that 12 years to so never shun at the foundation is uh without that there's no mahayana there's no enlightenment guys all right that's why he can't just go start when talk about hua yan jing to you to us all this big wondrous teaching because you know why if you don't get it the gist of it you will just think of it as a story like as a as some sort of a science fiction but buddhist version or some sort of a, 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 a star wars or stuff like that it's not all right it's it is you just you can't reach his level yet, so there's no point for him to show a one a, a, a year one student advanced calculus. It's just gonna make them sleep, or you know not getting the point. So why not just talk about 
plus minus multiplication and division. And that's it, call it a day. This is how it works. And it makes sense, right? Very logic. So after 12 years of that foundation of you know, all the rules and regulations and you know, as a monk, remember, I need to emphasize this. That's why I need to stay in this point. This is something where we need to start, by the way. That's why I'm emphasizing this. We are not going anything beyond that, to be honest. Anything beyond that is helping to expand the horizon. Anything beyond that is all about um, perception, how sharp you are. Those are all, those are all developing as you go, you know, and it, it will it will get better and better. Um, even in ancient China, it's like Zen. They have replaced this with Taoism, Confucianism. Not entirely. They they just not falling, not popular anymore in Tang Dynasty, later half which is 800 after Christ, I think, 800 or 1,200, I forgot, 1,000 years ago, all right? All right, year 1,000. Why? Because, and they still all gain enlightenment. That means they gain the same enlightenment, they see the same thing as Buddha. Even their real capability has not fully attained like Buddha, they see as Buddha see. So when they say they become Buddha, they are actually tangible progress towards Buddhism. For us, it's intangible. It's it's indefinite. We can't say, oh, tomorrow I can. I can't. Unless I already know that I will go to Pure Land, then yes, that is special. Right? Normal case, enlightenment that gained in Zen Buddhism, especially popularized in Zen Buddhism, is they see what the Buddha see. Literally, they think what the Buddha think. Or not thinking. I don't know. They, there's no... They don't stuck in that... I can't see wondrous. I can't put it in words, all right? Maybe because I'm not that skilled. Buddha definitely can. But what what I'm trying to say is, um, yeah, he see what the Buddha sees, hear what the Buddha hear, all right? And but they still need to work hard to enlighten, to work on the merits and all the departments, you know, accumulating. They already settled. They will not fall back too much. Some maybe a little bit, one or two life time they might regress a little bit but they will not they will always go back so they enlighten basically so what i'm trying to get at is why did they not learn nikata agama which what buddha is trying because they get the same point they get the same thing from confucian teaching and and taoist teaching somehow even wider than the first 12 years that buddha is trying to teach because different culture right so basically they have that Confucius upbringing, most of them, like normal Chinese or East Asian at the time, especially in the Chinese cycle, circle, they learn. Sisu Wu Jing, all these things are teaching about how do you serve the nation, to better the nation, expand your heart. You know, a person who, like I just mentioned, authority in power of, uh, uh, in charge of the family, head of a family, uh, a, a gentleman should always do that. Uh, people who are in power and authority, they will always have the heart of, um, you know, gold. They always want to uh, be a te good teacher, be a good... They have all this big mindset already, framework for them. They just grow in the environment. And then they also learn about, of course, cause and effect, which also influenced by Buddhism, mixed with the local. They talk about all the, you know, Yen Do Wang, you know, Yama King. Those are common village level understanding. Oh, if you do bad things, you kneel in front of the Tu Di Gong Miao, you know, the, I did that a lot of times. I always, I was very, as you can see, I was very, how to say, restless kid. So I end up, you know, having to kneel in front of the uh, uh, earth god, in a sense, yeah, who take care of the household and all that. So we just, these are very common stuff, cause and effect, um, you know, manifest. People might say it's superstitious because they don't understand. No one, no one talk about it anymore properly. They all talk, do rituals. Same goes with Buddhism. That's the problem, right? All become rituals. Then no one say why this ritual is important. Why is it conceived? And because you do this ritual, you will get into that meditative mindset. Or if even in heaven, you are together. You focusing on, you know, your mind on the Buddha's teaching. You're chanting his words, basically. And then you just use your mind and 
focus on it at that two hours so that you don't wandering thoughts anywhere else. Those are collective thoughts, very powerful. So this are, needs to be explained. Same goes with temple. Why do they have all these, you know, those folks temple, they have all these, you know, appearance of an angry God and stuff like that. They're to teach us consequences, consequences, right? It's like smoking campaign. Now Nowadays, they always have the lung cancer photos inside the secrets. Why? Consequences. They're telling you, you smoke, you get cancer. That's it. So I'm going to wrap it up. Um, 12 years in foundational coast and eight years, he started to expand the mindset of his student. Let's not talk about follow the rules and all, because you guys are doing well. You are good people. Most of you are good students. Now he started to say, why put ya? Why put ya is a fountain. It's a collection of sutra that talks about, you know, starting to go beyond. Uh, I will dig deep into it as I go. It's basically expanding horizon, you know, it's not just your own enlightenment, but the enlightenment of others. Also talk about the nature, you know, not because at the beginning they are very here, very brainy, very you know, sikhao, thinking. Still using a lot of thinking, like Socrates, like worldly knowledge, but it's not getting the good stuff that we very popularized right nowadays. It takes a long time, right? The, the, the good stuff we say, oh, enlighten immediately, uh, turning the the trouble into a uh, into a catalyst of your enlightenment. You know, fan nao ji pu ti, all this very uh, very shui qi de na dong hua, very um, what's it? Very um, sp- smart, mm, very amazing kind of a level of understanding and entertainment those are those takes time and before they reach there they need to expand the mindset all right eight years fountain and then after eight years entertaining the buddha nature kind of thing starting to hint on that you know not just thinking about only buddha can be buddha you also can be buddha in a way bad guy or people who don't understand or who insult buddhism can be buddha that's a long debate on that one and then Prashna Paramita, that's where the this, he start to. That's the point, guys. Something like that. I'm like, yeah, that's this is what I see. Now, this is what I. This is the eye of Buddha. You know, the world of Buddha. The the Prashna Paramita, the Sutra, Sutra Vichan, is a result of Buddha asking, or like a session, study session. But Bodhisattva come out and talk about. Her level, his level. Guan Yin, Bodhisattva Guan Yin, Avalo Ye Kites Fara. That's Guan Si Yin. Thank you, Chinese. Thank you, Xuanzang Das. Oh my God. Thank you. Really, thank you for Chinese. Otherwise, how do I explain this? Avalo Ye Kites Fara, Avalo Ye Kites Fara. There are two. Guan Si Yin and Guan Si Zai. All right. So basically, the most famous Guan Yin, the, the Bodhisattva in East Asia, is Bodhisattva Guan Yin which means Bodhisattva who observed the voice, right? What voice? Inside. You know? Oh my God. So many good stuff, guys. So many good stuff. And inherited. Um, 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 you know, basically what I'm trying to say is Heart Sutra is one of the essence of, Prash- of his teaching. 22 years of teaching. Prashna Paramita. Right? And in this Prashna Paramita, um, all is about it's talking all about wisdom and stuff which I cannot go any deep because I didn't dig too deep into it uh, all I can tell you is a context you know the index um, that 22 years our heart sutra that we're so used to this is a summary of Prashna Parameta in a way Boris you know, is like this is how I attain that level. Remember, Bodhisattva Guan Yin appear, which we will say mentioned later in Fahua, in the later of his teaching, getting better and better and more. It's like a show, TV show, gets more and more intense. Um, and you will realize, oh, behind the scene, there's so many Buddhas. They are not actually one Buddha. There are a thousand Buddha protecting one Buddha. Or a thousand Buddha, a thousand Buddha 
appearing as an extra in the scene just to put this main character out there. It takes a lot of, um, it's a lot of like, a, it's just getting interesting as you get there. So basically the point is, um, after Prashant Paramita, he spent 22 years, right? Longer than any period. That is because it's so important. Our pure land came out from there, right? Pure land would have to be part of the Pasha Paramita. And it will emphasize more on the application side, you know, because you can use pure land immediately, go to pure land. Um, and those, those sutra he's mentioned is always once only, one time. He seldom repeat himself because he had, first thing is Ananda, who can already remember every single thing he say, uh, almost without fail. Second thing is, it's mostly invoked by a question. People ask question, he answered the question. He didn't think, oh, what kind of sutra I say? Obviously, it's mechanical. It's not like that. Normal conversation. You ask people, people tell you something. There's a team. There's a there's a concept. He expand. He understand that right time, right place. It's because he's a Buddha, he has an ability. So do you when you attain that. Uh, not even full Buddhahood. You need to just reach a level where you can have above other hands and open up your Prashna Paramita wisdom, your wisdom, then you'll be able to get that. So the point is, Buddha has attained it and he gave the talk when he was asked, passively in a way. Only sutra that I heard of right now is Pure Land Sutra. No one say anything. He just sat there. Suddenly, well, directly on from Sutra, he released light. Fang Guang. What is release light? Everyone was like, what? Yeah, he released light. That's all I can explain. Fang Guang. So what does it mean? Um, release light means like um, he's ready to say something very amazing. The color of light, the radiance of his light, it's telling you something as well. So it's also an artistic teaching. He's not just sitting there, talk, talk, talk. He has a lot of skills at his two sets to teach. And he has the ability to just do it without needing PowerPoint projections. You can just say, oh, you don't know? Let's bring you there. As long as you understand, you're able, able to receive, then he will show you. He will not stop anyone. Like, you jiao wu lei, like Confucius. He will not stop anyone from seeking understanding. Only when you do not want to listen, then he's like, okay, sorry, man, bye. I can help you. Not really, though. If you have good affinity in the past, but this life you're not aware, he will still find a way. Anyway, so he, Pure Land Sutra is the only one he actually talked by himself. So he just sit there and release that sort of light and everyone can see that because they all attain, most of them attain enlightenment. Even normal people, he release a light at the wavelength people can see. Right? Obviously, he's trying to say something without trying to open his mouth. So, and then, when you read the Infinite Life Sutra, basically one of the occurrence, he released the light and Ananda asked question, very smart. He's asking question. There is a there is this underlying performance going on, unwritten rules. The people ask question, Buddha say something. So sometimes Buddha open up the initiative. Everyone's like, Oh, Buddha saying something. Okay, get ready guys. And then Ananda is like, Go out. You can imagine it's very funny. It's like the student was like the top ten students, like go, 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 and then go. And I say, like, uh Rusu I mean no, no, Rusu Wawin is because of recording, but that's have I heard, right? Those are another story which I will share. But right now he's, he's asking about that, 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 why are you so radiant and happy this time? It's norm, it's unlike any other days, right? You are exceptionally radiant today. You're literally putting out lights, light show in a way. Um, and then start to talk about Infinite Life Sutra. Like, this is why, because this is the way a lot of people can get out of six realms easily. Not just right now. Right now, you can listen to me and become Arahant. But beyond then, beyond then, you'll be able to achieve enlightenment at the very worst scenario. And, and you know, Dharma ending age, like current situation. We are at the first thousand year, two thousand, first thousand year of the 10K Dharma ending age, 10,000 year Dharma ending age. The whole period is 10,000 years. We are in the first one, first and a half, one and a half. So first thousand. So anyway, the point here is he gave 
talks, amazing talks like that. And he ended up with the last eight years of his uh, appearance in the earth. First half, Lotus Sutra, very important. That's why I need to have uh, emphasis. Because Lotus Sutra wraps up everything pretty well. Talks about behind the scene, basically. Like you watch the show, right? Behind the scene, what actually happens. So, he has a very famous quote. We need to keep in mind. This is how they operate. <clears throat> Chinese, 我十成佛以来, 无量无边百千万亿那由他解. I already been Buddha for countless, well, for countless, endless, boundless, kalpas. I already been Buddha for many, 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 many time years ago, basically. So he's already appearing in Earth, in this Earth, maybe this Earth or this Sahara world, eight thousand times. So think of this as like a tour, you know, like a like a performance tour, right? People go out and have a tour, uh, those famous rock star and stuff tour for what, 20, 30 times. He's touring this Sahara world for 8,000 times. He's doing the same thing, Baxiang Chen Dao, you know, birth the eight signs of, I mean, the eight steps of becoming Buddha. You know, Xiang Fu Mo Yuan De Wei Miao Fa. So to start with giving birth, being, being born, and then pointing up and down and say seven, walk seven steps, same thing, same 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 gig, and he also um you know able to overcome the Mara. Yeah, I need I, have, I haven't talked about how he overcome the Mara and all that when he gained enlightenment. I just brush over it. Thank you. So next time I'll talk about that. Better write it down. Um, so that's it. That's it, guys. Um, most of the time I spend on talking about this. Of course, at the moment I expand a little bit. But um, that's the framework of what I just said. I think we should end it here. This is 11. I think it's quite late for you guys as well. Or early. Um, and, you know, Master Wu Ching basically just talked about Buddha story, which I added already in our talk, uh, Melinda. Beyond that, she just say you need to have faith or belief, we call it. Belief, vow, and practice belief in you self as the buddha a spirit you are potentially not potentially you have buddha nature that means you have all the qualities of buddhahood in you you know all the good characters pure characters however uh, we need um, to work on it because we have lost sight of it all right and then you need to believe in pure land pure land is there it's not a wishy-washy. It is really a brainchild conception of reality made true by Amitabha's 48 vows, right? Where Amitabha was dealing with his own affliction back in pre-Buddhahood stage, back in the normal people stage. He went through many, many, many hard work. And when he became a monk, Fa Zhang, Venerable Fa Zhang, right? He also heard from the um, Buddha of that time, learned, watched, observed good and bad of all the worlds for five kalpas. Five kalpas, what is it? One kalpa. One kalpa is, yeah, see, Google help me to ask, 16 million years, my friend. 16 million years. It's just a rough estimate. I don't even know if their kalpa is our kalpa. But yeah, when Buddha say five kalpas, you can approximately understand it as 80 million years. He spent 80 million years. Obviously, his lifespan is a very long one. Um, to get all the data, like what we have now, preliminary research. It takes 80 million years to practice all this, right? To, 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 to cultivate the qualities, to observe the world, good and bad, like our world, good and bad. You know, you know, very tenacious, very able to overcome hardship, even though it's a, it's not a very desirable situation. There's a good quality, and there's a bad quality. Is there's a lot of distraction, a lot of temptation, a lot of affliction, a lot of unwandering thoughts. He say, I don't want any of that. Those are the cause of three lower realms. So he observed everything, 
and create pure land because he know a lot of people need this, needed this. But compassion, wisdom, purity, everything he has cultivated. He also need to cultivate the merits of building a pure land. It takes a lot of, it's like money, funds, right? You need the funds to construct a building, a project. He needs a vast amount of merits. A vast amount of merits can only be made possible for the size of pure land, which is endless. And endless merit will only be taken, deserved by a person with a boundless heart. Really boundless. Like, there's no ego we stick in anything. It's just pure love. Pure love. Not even, not even you and I and that. It's just pure love. Pure care. So that takes so long for him. Hence, if you want to believe in Amitabha, that's the angle I encourage we should go into. Something concrete for us. Um, and then, of course, you can understand the cost of chanting Amitabha and the result, the effect is becoming Amitabha, which is becoming Buddha. Nian fo shi yin cheng fo shi guo. Xing yin xing guo, xing shi xing li. Believe in that, you know, the, um, the, the, uh, the yin guo, the cause and effect of being a Buddha, right? It's not easy. It's not normal cause and effect that we learn in Tai Shang. Right? It's the cause and effect that even Bodhisattva are hard to believe. The, 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 the lower level, the lesser attained one. Well, for us, it's very high, but for them, right, it's novice. Some Bodhisattva can't even believe it because it's just too easy. You just need to chant Amitabha for and you gain the non-regression state. Abhidhamma or Abhidhamma. Anyway, the non-regression state. What? It takes us so much. It takes us what, san, san da asan ji jie, the three great kalpas. One kalpa times, I don't know how many times, astronomical numbers. So everyone, it's even Bodhisattva hard to believe in, you know, the, the smaller one. So for us to understand this, it's amazing. You're willing to sit there and say, oh yeah, I'm going to do that, man. This life is not, I'm not going to stay here too long and suffer through all this. Not, not saying that you shouldn't have tenacious and have a good kind of quality. You, know, you still need to do your job and stuff like that. But what I'm saying is, once this show is over, you need to go to Pure Land. Don't, don't stuck in this show, endless loop. So believe in this way. And start with yourself. You need to understand that you are Buddha. It's just you lost your way. You need a way out. Second is, then believe in Pure Land. Believe in Amitabha. Second is the vow. Vow is straightforward. You just want to go there. You just want to go there. You don't want to go anywhere else. How do you help that? Help yourself with that. Venerable mentioned about you, you you read the sutra. You understand how amazing that place is. Right? In there, you can visualize. Right now, as you're listening to us, we talk about pure land. We talk about, and then our mind might inevitably, Amitofo, Amitofo, Amitofo. As you actually do that earnestly, you're growing upon a flower that is yours. Everything in pure land is unchanging, is serene, is the same. Only thing that change in pure land is your lotus. That is not because of Buddha's doing. It's just a door and it's up to you whether you want to go full blossom or you want to halfway and a wilted. That means how strong is your conviction to get there. And means how power, how 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 sincere and how frequent is your chanting, right? As more as you chant more and more and more, the flower will blossom even better. Eventually, to a level where you're ready to go, Buddha will pick that flower and for you to step on. You climb up, up to you. You can float, you can climb, whatever. It's up. It's, it's your. It's your. It's your journey. So they, he will just follow whatever you want as long as you're not thinking about anything else other than Amitabha. So you focus and you sit on the on the on the lotus that he holds and then the flower bulb close and then go to pure land and then according to the sutra it says yi shi qing qing ke bian shi is a yu yi shi qing wan fu ben guo so in uh, amitabha sutra it's like eating a take a time of eating a meal so 15 minutes 30 minutes depends you, you reach to pure land some it's just a saying, all right? It can be immediately. What I'm trying to say is have a vow. Think of this world. Think of that world. This world has ABC problems. That world has ABC merits. This world has 
trouble of life and death, a sickness, illness, and all these um, people with different mindset and trying to fight each other. Over there, everyone knew each other by heart. They don't have to go through all that communication problem. All right. So have a vow to go there. Understand how wondrous that place is. It makes you really want to go there. And you enhance this by like this one, this session, or, you know, give yourself a bit of time. Let it sink in. And when you have, um, you know, when you want to think about, um, when, you, when you're experiencing life as it throws at you, then you start to understand pure land is really important. That's why it is. You see someone around you pass away. You see someone have a, appear, you know, not so good. You know, suddenly, one day was sunshine and flowers. The other day, that's it. 20, 30 years old, pass away. It happened to me. It happened to others. So, you really never know, man. And what's next? You don't know. Right? There's so much uncertainty. Over there, you can see everything. You can help everyone. Right. Vow to go there is also a vow to help everyone. You can help everyone. Oh yeah, we talk about this. You can help anyone when you're halfway in the quicksand. You can help another person who sink in the quicksand when you're already halfway in the quicksand. The only way you can do is, hold on, I'm going to grab a branch. Someone pull me out. And then you pull them out. All right. You need to help yourself first. You need to help yourself out of your affliction before you do that. To do that, Pure Land is the best way. To help them, you introduce pure land to them. Because Amitabha has the ability. You have affinity with that person. You use this affinity if in the right time to encourage them. All right. The last one is just practice, practice, practice. Chan, chan, chan. You know, 10 times chanting. Left five, right five. Amitabha, 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 Amitabha. Sometimes you can focus three, three, four. Amitofo, Amitofo, Amitofo. Visualize that left ear, right times. Amitofo, Amitofo, Amitofo. Six times. Four times in the middle. Two ears combined. Amitofo, 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 Amitofo. Yeah. Visualize it, make it easier for you. And nine times per day. Those are just suggestions, all right? Uh, first, three meals. Wake up, sleep, three meals. Right, and then if you work or any routine you have in the morning before you start your morning routine work, gym or whatever, and then after you finish your morning routine before lunch, uh, before your lunch time. So morning routine when you start morning routine, you stop, and then afternoon morning routine you start, uh, afternoon routine start afternoon work routine afternoon activities before you started. And then after you finished, so nine times, very easy. But need to do it. I haven't done it a lot, so that's it. I hope I give as much as I can. Uh, hopefully, what's left out or what's inspired out of this will be continued next week, next next week in the Buddha story. And I really need to take a rest now. Thank you so much. Let's do the dedication of merits, and we will go to sleep. Dedication merits. May the merits and virtues adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion, and leave the teachings for the rest of this life. Then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Amitabha. Good night, everyone. See you.